In the 16th century, Francis Bernard travels to Spain to clarify the strange circumstances of his sister's death after she had married the son of a cruel Spanish inquisitor. Following the fall of the House of Usher, Roger Corman's second loosely based adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's The Pit and the Pendulum is a gothic tragedy full of twists that plays like a companion piece to Usher. The film is rich in Poe-like themes, grossed in a brooding atmosphere, instances of a cursed heritage, a doomed mansion, dungeons and premature burial culminate to great effect. Vincent Price delivers as the guilt-ridden widower with an animated performance plunging into madness. English actress Barbara Steele, who had just attained immortality in Mario Barber's Black Sunday, is another standout, although her screen time leaves much to be desired. The film is a highly effective merging of star power, both in front and behind the camera. From the beginning, the look and overall tone is rather menacing. The daunting castle reigning high over our protagonist, played by John Kerr, is immediately threatening, an ominous relic inviting us into its mystery. Production designer Daniel Holler and widescreen colour photography veteran Floyd Crosby do a fantastic job creating an unsettling period piece that makes you feel the castle was alive with a diabolical history. Crosby, a master of pre-psychedelic colour swirls, and Holler, who could stretch a budget to make crypts and castles seem endless, triumph in atmosphere and spectacle. With an estimated budget of 300000 on a 15-day shoot, it's rather impressive what was accomplished. The film gives the impression of a high-end Hammer production. Exterior shots of the castle are reminiscent of those used in later Corman films such as The Terror and The Raven. The brief exterior prologue showing Kerr's arrival was filmed on the Palos Verdas coast. The rest of production was shot in four interior sound stages at the California studios in Hollywood. To create the flashbacks revealing Nicholas's traumatic experiences, Corman insisted on these images having a dreamlike quality, twisted and distorted because they were being experienced by someone in the rim of madness. Corman decided to film the flashbacks in monochrome, since he had read that some psychiatrists believe most people dream in black and white imagery. Crosby used wide-angled lenses, violent camera movement, and tilted camera angles to represent the character's feeling of hysteria. The sequences were then printed on a blue tinted stock which was subsequently toned red during development, effectively producing a two-tone image. The image was then run through an optical printer where the edges were vignetted and a twisted linear distortion was introduced. The overall effect specifically during the sequence with Price and Steel remains reminiscent of something from the silent era. The cabinet of Dr. Calguri speaks out a German expressionist film and one of the earliest known horrors characterised by its deep shadows, extreme camera tilting and impossible sets. Screenwriter Richard Madison did a fine job of adapting Poe's rather limited short story by saving the dungeon sequence for the climax and then creating a rather interesting plotline to lead up to it. Price beginning the film as a delicate, sorrowful gentleman is a great contrast to the menace we see in the later half. It's interesting to witness his gradual decline in sanity he somewhat feels sympathetic for his plight, but are never sure if you could fully trust him. Something just feels odd. Barbara still has a few good moments as the pretend ghost emerging lank-haired from her tomb. The problem I have is she is hurried out of the way at the climax, only to be left stranded and wild-eyed in an Iron Maiden, which admittedly is a great fade-out shot and an eerie one at that. Perhaps some extended screen time or an interaction with her brother would have benefited the film. Her lines are dubbed because of her supposed regional accent. She's casted well for a femme fatale. The pair carried a picture virtually on their own, with John Kerr's hero a notable waste of time. To conclude, The Pit and the Pendulum is a riveting gothic piece with enough star power and atmosphere to leave you on the edge of your seat. Roger Corman has evoked a generally chilling mood, and the result is a physically stylish, imaginatively photographed O'Day de Horror. The story heightened by Price and Steele's performance, navigates you into the realm of madness. <laughs> and you, my dear, why are you so pale? Does this place disturb you? <laughs> I thought the two of you would enjoy the novelty of it. <laughs>